This is the first video in the topic plate tectonics. Um, what we're going to look at is the development of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is an interesting example of something that has changed perspective over the last couple of hundred years as to how we think about things. As more evidence has come around, our theories have changed and the, we've found more evidence to support that. So it's the best theory that we have at the moment, uh, but what we're going to see is some older theories that we've now uh, seen defunct. We're first going to cover a few of the old static earth theories, uh, including the contracting earth, expanding earth, floating continents, and the common theme of these static earth theories. So with these fixed earth theories, we're looking at the late 19th towards the early 20th century. Uh, and one of the fixest theories is the contracting earth. And that's, as we know, as objects cool down, they shrink. So therefore, the hot core of the earth, as it cools down, it must be shrinking. So therefore, the whole earth is shrinking. And as the earth shrinks, the continents, which are sort of floating on the top, crash into each other. And this crashing forms mountain ranges. So an example of this would be uh, the Indian continent crashing into the Asian continent, causing the Himalayas. Another theory at the time was the expanding Earth theory. So this is the exact opposite. Rather than contracting, the Earth is expanding. And this is because over time, the gravity of the Earth is pulling uh, rocks and things out of space that come down as meteorites. And so the Earth is getting bigger all the time. And the theory goes that originally, the Earth was totally covered in land. But as the Earth has expanded, those uh, land masses have broken up and moved further and further away from each other and oceans have come in the parts between them. And the reason that they had this theory is because it explains why in certain areas, in different continents, you get the same sorts of fossils popping up over and over again, even though there's no land bridge, there's no way to explain how the animals would have got from one continent to another. And then there was another theory, a bit less popular, but it was that the continents floated. And so the continents are able to move up and down uh, and they float in the oceans, whether they're floating on the water or whether they're sort of floating on the liquid mantle. It depends who you uh, sort of read from the time. And this explains uh, why the marine fossils are found on dry land. So maybe a continent was below the water and has risen. Uh, to dry out, so we get the marine fossils. Uh, and it also explains why uh, fossils in two parts of the world are the same, because the, there might have been a continent between those two continents that has now fallen into the sea. And this is basically the Atlantis myth, that there was a big island called Atlantis uh, that at some point fell into the sea. So the common theme across these theories at the time was most geologists in the early 20th, late 19th century uh, viewed the continents as fixed features, which means that they could rise and fall, but they couldn't move sideways. They were pretty much set where they were in the world. Okay, so in this video, we've looked at some different fixed uh, earth theories. We've looked at the contracting earth, that the earth is getting smaller. We've looked at the expanding earth, that the earth is getting bigger. Uh, we've looked at continents floating, whether on the water or on the mantle, and popping up out of the sea and then sinking into the sea like Atlantis. And the common theme of these different uh, worldviews in that the continents are fixed in place, can move up and down, but not sideways.